Next here tonight in the state of our seas, we take you to Gulf Specimen Marine Lab. It's an environmental education center that started out in the 60s, originally to help research labs and schools better understand the ecosystems of the panhandle. And as reporter Sophia Hernandez and photojournalist Anthony Sherrod shows you tonight, it's work that's really important now more than ever. It's a little paradise, a little treasure all by itself, and it's being threatened. To some, Jack Redlow is a cynic. Start treating the remaining lands that we have as the gems that they really are and how precious. We're going to lose it, and I'm not real optimistic that we're going to be able to save it. But to most, he's a pioneer in the conservation community. You'd see a perfectly productive habitat full of fiddler crabs and, you know, grass shrimp and all that stuff, and they're there one week and next thing you know it's all ripped to pieces and it's gone and it's turned into a big mud hole. Redlow has written seven books on the region, the first few specifically focused on the landscape. He says the biggest driver has been development. All good shape until man gets involved in it. He's talking about the wetlands, the primary nursery for all things that come in and out of this region. Since the 70s, Florida has passed extensive legislation to protect wetlands. The Florida Wetlands Program regulates any dredging, filling, or construction in or on waters or wetlands. That includes the Gulf of Mexico, its estuaries and lagoons, but there are still problems. Wakulla Springs, home to the creature from the Black Lagoon, one of the largest freshwater springs in the world, has been around for more than 12,000 years. But in recent months, talks of putting a 16-pump gas station near the springs has sparked lots of pushback, from Redlow included, causing the company to put a pause on their permits. We basically punched holes in some of the tires, so they're, they're still going down the road going flop, 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 but they're still going down the road and we're still losing habitat, but uh, it's still a fight. The fight also remains with runoff. One example, a new golf course. They put in a spray field, they fertilized the golf course, well, where's that water going to go but into the aquifer and out into Spring Creek? And that's where we're going to start seeing probably more fish kills. Like many things on the water, there's the bad. So now you don't see seahorses anymore as much as you did? Not much like you used to see them, no, you don't. And occasionally, there's the good. Loggerhead sea turtles, like this blind one, are threatened. But their largest home is right here in the Gulf where thankfully they are protected. All the nesting nesting groups on St. George Island, Alligator Point, uh, Cape Sandless, uh, they've, they've done quite a bit. What Jack says is most important now is educating. It's why Jack says he started the Gulf Specimen Marine Laboratory and Aquarium to show others just how vital these marine animals are. It's such a big ocean and there's so much questions about what's going on with individual species. It can't come up with easy answers. But he's doing his best to understand what he can and try to show others that leaving these critters and the place they call home alone, he believes is best for everyone. Sophia Hernandez reporting.